welcome to another edition of Talk of the Town with Supervisor Dick Thurston. We're here today in front of our town hall on Middlebush Road uh, because FEMA is here. And I'd like to ask you know, our councilman, Bill Beal, but also with the County Emergency Preparedness Department. You know, uh, Bill, you know, why is FEMA here today? So, uh, first of all, it's an honor to be on your show for the first time, actually. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan. I watch it on a regular basis. Uh, but I just happen to be here uh, coordinating FEMA's arrival here in the town of Wapachira as part of Dutchess County's individual assistance program uh, that we've become eligible for. Uh, we're starting this, uh, what they call, disaster recovery center uh, process right here in the town of Wappinger. This is one of many municipal halls that FEMA will be at here in Dutchess County. But we're the first one? We are, we are the first. Uh, this is the first uh, time that they've set up uh, at a municipal hall here uh, in Dutchess County. And this all goes back to early September uh, when the remnants of Hurricane right. Ida uh, affected uh, this town and many right. other towns in Dutchess County. Uh, residents uh, all across Dutchess County suffered uh, uh, impacts from that storm and uh, the supervisor and I uh, have spoken to so many residents in this town that uh, uh, got water in their basements, water in their living spaces, uh, had uh, some structural uh, right. damage yeah. even uh, off of DeGarmo Hills Road there. Even uh, in areas where there weren't creeks or streams right, you right. Know, because uh, of the flooding on the land and the culverts and everything. Which was amazing to me on Highview Road. Right. We had uh, an individual who's uh, uh, foundation actually yeah. uh, collapsed wow. oh, and that was uh, because of the water yeah. uh, from this storm so from a county perspective I am the county emergency manager that's my full-time job in addition uh, here to being a councilman um, we worked very hard with County Executive Mark Molinaro right. uh, to uh, convince FEMA that we had enough damage here in Dutchess County which would warrant what's known as an individual assistance declaration uh, we have not had an individual assistance declaration in Dutchess County since uh, Hurricane Irene and Lee mm. uh, in 2011. So it's been 10 years. Uh, but what that allows for is folks that have suffered uh, damage right. uh, or impacts or financial loss from the remnants of Hurricane Ida, uh, those folks now are eligible to go to disasterassistance.gov, disasterassistance.gov, and fill out an application. Uh, because uh, because we're part of this declaration, you may now be eligible for right. some level right. of financial assistance from right. FEMA. So, and it, but there's also though uh, SBA available correct, for correct. businesses. Correct. Uh, we right? have SBA here today. Right. Uh, right. The Small Business Administration uh, has uh, a parallel uh, declaration uh, for this particular storm, and folks that uh, are, are owners or operators of small businesses uh, that have seen impacts from the remnants of Hurricane Ida can also qualify potentially for low interest loans right. uh, and assistance through FEMA and SBA. So uh, the point of the disaster recovery centers, which are the physical locations like this, uh, are for folks to come here, uh, receive assistance with filling out an application. Perhaps they don't have access to right. uh, an online portal, right? Correct. Uh, if they don't have internet, they can come here. Uh, if they have already filed their application through FEMA, they can come here and get their questions answered. Um, see what other programs exist, right. and they can also check on the status of their claim. Correct. Uh, so these are uh, services that FEMA offers through the county into the local municipalities to the residents. Uh, this way you're not just filling out an application online and wondering right. what the status is. So here at the town of Wappature, this uh, presence of FEMA will be here through Saturday, right. and then Monday of next week it will move to another location. It'll be in the city of Beacon uh, Monday through Wednesday. But if somebody misses it here, they could go to you Beacon. You could go to any of them. Yeah. So you can go to Beacon next week, town of Fishkill will follow, and then it's going to go to East Fishkill, Pauling, and it's going to work its way up the Harlem Valley as well. You can see the complete uh, schedule at DuchessNY.gov. And I believe that the hours are 9 to 6 or around? Uh, around 9 to 6 or 10 yeah. to 6, depending on uh, the location. Uh, obviously, FEMA and the county have to work around uh, some some existing schedules that occur within municipal halls. Like, for example, we have court that occurs here, right? Court's going to occur later, so we have to move into a different room. Right. So we understand that there's existing parameters that need to be met uh, having to do with hours, so the flexibility does exist. Right. So come on out if you have questions, if you have claims that you want to follow up on, please come on out here. If you have any other needs or questions, give me a call. Give Councilman Bill a call. You know. One other thing we need to stress to residents, we have about 15 FEMA representatives. Uh, they are uh, disaster survivor representatives that are in the county right now. 
Uh, they're basically going neighborhood to neighborhood and they're checking on folks that may have indicated they had impacts. Understand that these individuals have FEMA credentials. They have uh, often have FEMA outerwear on. Uh, they are official folks. You can ask to see their identification if, you, uh, if you'd like. Uh, but understand we do have these individuals out in the uh, neighborhoods, uh, so be aware of that. Yeah. Again, I'd like to really thank Bill you know, for all his efforts in assisting uh, our town and others. You know, Marcus Molinera, our county executive, each one of our councilmen and women you know, were very much engaged in this. Of course, Bill and I were out on the roads. Uh, we did have also some other you know, flooding issues that the board is, going, is focusing very much on related to Sprout Creek. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about our budget and future capital plans, we are addressing uh, those issues as well as uh, these. I think uh, it is worth mentioning that uh, Hurricane Ida was one event. It was just one event of a number of events that we've seen here in the town of Wapature. Uh, not many of those get the declaration uh, level such as this. But we do understand uh, there are impacts, right? We just had another rainstorm where we had about two inches of rain yeah. a week or so ago. Uh, in some of these areas that flood on a regular basis in our town, uh, there are programs through FEMA, uh, they're called mitigation programs, and we're looking very closely at areas adjacent to the Sprout Creek, uh, areas, right. uh, low-lying areas that flood on a regular basis uh, to see if we can receive funding from FEMA to help mitigate those problems so they don't occur time and time again. And those mitigation programs exist through FEMA. Uh, we are eligible as a town that participates in the multi-jurisdictional uh, hazard mitigation program. So we're looking at those areas and uh, we're working proactively to try to correct them. Yeah. Thanks again, Bill. A Thank you. Being on your show. Thank, Thank you, you, residents. Take care. Now we're back inside having discussed FEMA. And again, please, anybody that has any claims, any concerns with respect to the water damage, please come on out. We're here three days. FEMA will be here Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in town hall. So come on out even if it's just questions. We have a full team, I think of about 10, a dozen people here in town hall. So come on out. Uh, transitioning from FEMA, uh, which is of course a very important topic for our residents, I just want to, on a lighter note, you know, mention that we have Again, our fall activities you know, coming up. First will be our Veterans Day ceremony. That's going to be next Thursday, November the 11th. You know, every year we hold that here at Town Hall uh, in the uh, memorial you know, uh, area uh, with, the, with the flagpole outside of Town Hall on the front uh, facing Middle Bush Road. And you know, so that ceremony will, will start at 1 p.m. here at that uh, little uh, area, memorial area. Our keynote speaker that day will be Dawn uh, Shell. Uh, she's the director of the uh, VA Hudson Valley Healthcare System. Uh, it operates uh, over on this side of the river uh, out of our Castle Point uh, facility. Uh, the VA center is part of the healthcare system and uh, we're really proud to have it uh, right along the border of the town. And so please come on out. In addition, we will have uh, New York Assemblyman Kieran Lawler, himself a veteran, uh, speaking uh, to our uh, attendees. We'll have uh, the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, other music uh, present uh, throughout you know, the uh, ceremony. And so please come on out to honor our veterans uh, on the 11th, uh, that's Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. here in Town Hall. Right after you know, the uh, uh, veteran ceremony, you know, we're going to have on Saturday, November the 13th, our second annual book sale that benefits, goes to the benefit of our seniors. You know, that's gonna be here you know, from the hours of nine till 3 p.m. And so what happens? You know, we have a lot of books, uh, used books that have been donated. So if you pay $5, you'll get a small bag that you're allowed to fill up with whatever books that can fit in the small bag. And for $10, you'll be able to, you'll get a bigger bag, like a, a, a food store, you know, shopping, you know, paper shopping bag. So, you know, please take advantage of it. There's really, I've already looked over some of the books, uh, really some very good titles uh, that you'll enjoy uh, reading uh, and, uh, you know, come on out to support our veterans. In addition, uh, there will be a raffle basket uh, here uh, that will be uh, $250 worth of New York State Lottery scratch-off cards. 
Uh, so we've actually have a pretty good uh, participation so far as a result of some of our earlier events. Events. So for each ten dollars you get, you know, buy a raffle ticket, you'll get a chance, you know, for that uh, two hundred and fifty dollar. You know, that's the face value. That's not the scratch off value. So hopefully it will be even, you know, more for you. And as well, you know, during the book sale, you'll be able to sign up for our memorial bricks and also for a memorial banner for our hometown heroes. Although we will be taking down the banners soon, as winter approaches, we'll bring them inside to preserve them. You still, please come on out, order a banner for a loved one, for a friend, someone that has served or is serving in our armed forces uh, today. Uh, so the uh, proceeds, again, for uh, the, all this goes to uh, not just the cost of materials, but then all the additional proceeds, especially from the book sale, will go to our Veterans Activity Group. And last but not least, on December the 4th, uh, this will be a Saturday at 5 p.m., and we will hold our annual uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony, but also the big event will be we'll have Santa's helpers there and Santa himself will be showing up on our uh, new Hackensack uh, fire truck uh, and uh, that will start at 5 p.m. Uh, but also uh, leading up to the uh, lighting of the tree, uh, we will have a, a bonfire. You know, many of you will remember the bonfire that we had in our community day, the carnival uh, event. Uh, so it won't be quite as big, we'll have a little bit uh, a smaller one, but again, our, our friends at COSM are going to be donating uh, the bonfire you know, for us to uh, hopefully uh, stay warm uh, during uh, what might be a cool you know, win uh, pre-winter day. So everyone, please come on out to all of these events, uh, two in uh, November and then our December 4th tree lighting. We look forward to seeing you uh, then and there. So thank you very much for your continued participation. I just want to end on a note of thanks. I look forward to working uh, for you know, two more years you know, for you. Uh, also our town board that was uh, reelected uh, is a similar uh, nature. You know, we're looking forward to continuing to help. We have a number of items that are on our list uh, and some of which were uh, actually been postponed due to the pandemic, uh, such as a new community senior center, uh, swimming pool, taking care of the flood uh, issues and trying to mitigate more along the Sprout Creek. We're working closely with different agencies and especially uh, the towns of East Fishkill, LaGrange and Fishkill. In fact, I had a meeting yesterday you know, with the East Fishkill supervisor about what we're going to do. That's going to be important because many houses along the creek you know, got flooded during Ida and the rains afterwards. Of course, our uh, sports athletic facilities, uh, fields for baseball, soccer, and other uh, lacrosse, other team events uh, were also continuously impacted because of the uh, floodwaters. You know, keep in mind the town is very much uh, one of uh, wetlands, uh, both state, federal, and town. And unfortunately, because the uh, groundwater is so fully saturated and the water table is extremely high, we have a lot more in the way of issues uh, relating to flooded basements and the use of the uh, sump pumps uh, that have caused a number of issues, whether or not it's with neighbors or water going out into the streets. So please, uh, you know, if you have any you know, concerns or issues, give us a call, the highway department or myself, and we'll uh, respond to you uh, as quickly as we can. So thank you very much again for your support. Uh, we look forward to seeing you here in town hall and many of our town events. So uh, please take care and uh, remain well. Thank you.